Hello and welcome to this podcast about Godzilla Minus One. I am your host Adam Noyce. Today I was joined by my good friend and fellow Godzilla fanatic, Lucas Schloth. And we, of course, talked about Godzilla Minus One. There will be some spoiler talk in case you have not seen it yet, even though now it is on Netflix and available. Strap yourselves in, sit back, make yourself some tea. Hope you enjoy. I want to just kind of start off by saying that the fact that it's a miracle that I got to see this movie in theaters because I genuinely, where I live in Maine, it's like hardly anything like this comes up here. I was genuinely shocked because suddenly I saw that in a theater by me, they were actually going to play not just Godzilla minus one, but they were going to play the early access screening of it. And so suddenly I was like, I have to go. I have to go. I'm buying my ticket. I have to go. I didn't get to see it in IMAX. It was just a regular theater, but I had great sound. But it was just a regular theater, so so I guess I'm less lesser than than you, Lucas, since not only did you get to see it in IMAX, you got to see it in, in IMAX twice. Well, you don't gotta phrase it like that. God damn. But uh, no, yeah. So yeah, so my my early screening was like the the IMAX screening that they were doing. I, I went and saw it in IMAX, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking sick in IMAX. The the sound system was fucking killer. That was like, just it. Like, oh my god, the sound. So I think the sound this. was like the, the obviously the IMAX screen is awesome. I think the yeah. sound is the biggest thing with the screen, the IMAX screen for this movie. Godzilla minus one, Lucas. Without giving any spoilers, okay. What were your overall thoughts of this movie going into the movie? You know, it's been known on for like weeks prior that it was getting rave reviews in Japan and it was getting rave reviews here. I'm a person who who knows that i have to form my own opinion you know it's actually contrary to popular belief of what the internet says the the little tomato website actually doesn't define your taste on movies Con- contrary to what it, it may you may think um so hearing all of that i was scared going into it is it really that good is it really that fucking good i mean this is again this is falling up shin godzilla shin godzilla i think is a fucking awesome movie so i go into the movie theater I leave the theater, and there was literally one thought on my fucking brain after leaving the theater. I get it now. I thought it was really fucking good. I don't think you need me to tell you that, considering what th- what people are saying online, but I think genuinely it's really fucking good. <laughs> I think it is one of... I think it was a really personal story, and I think that adds to it so fucking much. And then just, I think the CG was really fucking good, too. I... <laughs> I'm like digging for complaints for this movie, and that's always a good fucking sign. I knew this movie was going to be good because I'm a fan of the director. Yeah, I've heard uh, his stuff prior is good too. What I loved about it, because a lot of people, I, I did two videos kind of discussing about my thoughts as, as information was coming out. One of my biggest concerns with this movie was that how are they going to explain in 1947 Japan that Japan can defend itself? against godzilla america would have to get involved they'd have to yeah yeah they explain it yep (laughs) i get it it was great it was this was a wonderful new look at godzilla without it being radically different like i love the opening and i and i've said this before and i've said this again i can only name two other godzilla movies in the entire franchise that if you take godzilla out of it you still got a good movie this is the third one yep 100% 100% agree with you. What they did and what the writer did, it's quite clear that he's been working on this movie for a long time. And this movie has been stewing in his brain for a long time just because mm-hmm. of how polished it is, just yeah. because of how yeah. efficient it is. It's get in and get out. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And what's great is that this movie could have been three and a half hours and Godzilla had the same exact screen time as he does in the theatrical cut. And I still would love it yeah. because I yeah. love these characters. I care yeah. about them. It's a touching movie. It is almost the antithesis to Shin Godzilla in many yeah. ways. Yeah. Uh, and not in a bad way. It's just, I can't believe it, but the Reiwa era has been two for two in terms of their live action movies. Mm-hmm. It, it, they have knocked both of these movies, despite them being radically different from each other, both have been excellent, excellent films. And Godzilla Minus One, despite it technically, I think, being a bit more of a general audience movie than Shin Godzilla is, It's like they took all of the criticisms from the MonsterVerse Mm -hmm. and said, oh, you don't care about your human characters? Oh, you don't care about your plot? 
oh, you don't care about th these characters are just to advance the plot and that's it for monster action? Yeah, now I'm going to make it completely about the human characters and Godzilla is going to be your backdrop. And I've been saying it for years, Lucas, that I think the idea of Godzilla being your backdrop, the looming dread in the background throughout yeah, the entire yeah. film, would work in a Godzilla movie. And Godzilla Minus One is proof that not only w could it work, it does work and works extremely well. To summarize my thoughts on this movie, a masterpiece, I believe I tweeted and I said, I, I said this movie is a triumph. And it is. I was so legitimately concerned going into it of just hearing all like the positive praise about it. I was like, I, I, I'm sure it'll be good, but like, will it be like, no, it's, it's a fucking stellar movie. It's, it's a not stellar me saying, movie. It's not even me saying like a stellar Godzilla movie. No, 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 no. It is a stellar movie. Exactly. And that to me is the sign you got it. Exactly. Is that you made the movie yeah. good. It doesn't have to just be a Godzilla movie. It's a good fucking movie. Let's actually start getting into the spoilers then. From this point forward, <laughs> if you haven't seen Godzilla Minus One and you're living under a rock. I want to talk about the opening scene of this fucking movie. I was scared fucking shitless in the opening they, scene of this fucking movie. <laughs> they turned Godzilla into something horrifying in yeah. the opening of this movie. That creepy ass roar yep. that they did, manipulating Godzilla, the original 54 roar, essentially. Yeah. Horrifying. Dude, not even that. That well, yeah, that how quick it all goes from zero to fucking a hundred. They hear the alarms <laughs> go off. They're like, "Oh, shine, shine the light, shine the light!" Literally, it's like right as they fucking turn. Yes, he's on, he's on them, and I, I love was that shit. So tense throughout that whole fuck. I mean, I was not expecting that scene, Lucas. I was not expecting that scene at all. I was not no. expecting to see the sixty foot Godzilla monster no, before he got not. nuked. You know, it, 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 to me, it was like a mixture of Gorgo. And and the the um ninety one Godzilla attack uh, from yeah, Godzilla yeah. versus King Ghidorah yeah you know the Godzilla sore it was like a beautiful mixture of those two things and I I loved it I was like oh this is why people thought there were going to be two Godzillas yeah yeah I'm and... glad I never saw anything about that though like I I didn't yeah, see, I was too. good at avoiding spoilers for it so it was like when that scene happened it was like it was fucking scary. Like, I, I did not anticipate it. I'm like, no, I was oh. not anticipating this. The sound was really good. I, I also got to say, as the history buff in me, the history buff in me loved seeing them shooting Type 99 rifles yeah. uh, to, to, at Godzilla wearing Japanese uniforms against yeah. Godzilla. I'm like, this is World War II and Godzilla. You can't. This this movie is literally made for me. Do you think? Because uh -oh. again, this is an aspect of that beginning scene of the movie, and it's about the access of the main character uh, Koichi, his arc. Do you think if he fired the gun, he would have killed him? No. He would have died. He would have been killed. Well, that's one of the themes that I fucking, or one of the 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 the, the elements of the movie that carries over throughout this entire thing is this is this uh, feeling of dread, because yeah, because yeah. and it's a very Japanese thing, and you can definitely tell that 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 the director um, Yamazaki he mm -hmm. loves this era of Japanese history. He knows this era of this history. You can also tell that he loves planes and ships from this era, but. The attitude that people have when Yamazaki returns, because they know he was supposed to be a kamikaze pilot, mm -hmm. and he didn't die. Yeah, they were... And, like, what is it, that woman who, who goes, it's your fault my kids are dead. Yeah. That is such a Japanese thing. Mm -hmm. And what's brilliant about her saying that, it establishes this universe and how drastically different this world is compared to their modern-day world. Yeah. And, yeah. and how horrible of a situation Japan was in without there being a huge exposition dump of being like, the Americans have been bombing us for about 12 days. You should know this by now. Yeah. And and the fire bombings killed so many of us, Jimmy. Through these few words, you suddenly realize how cutthroat it is. You see her talking about how if you had died, my children may have still been alive. And the yeah. other one was when they discovered that girl with her baby, you know, and it's not her mm -hmm. baby. And that same yeah. woman says... Why didn't you just leave the baby? And I'm like, those lines show you just how bad it was in Japan at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Just how starved they were. That's what I loved about this, yeah. is that yeah. they didn't need any exposition dumps. None of that. It's all done through visuals and just natural dialogue with your characters. And I am like, this is gold.
And again, it doesn't sound like I'm going to be pooping on Hideaki Anno, but we all know that Hideaki Anno, when he's writing stuff, loves his exposition dumps. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. one of his staples, you know? That's what he's yeah, really yeah. good at, is some of the characters yeah. spousing out a bunch of techno babble and, and, and trying to figure out a plan, and oh my god, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. That's not this movie at all. That's not what no. you're going to get out of this movie at all. It works so well. It, it just... And it's not flashy about it either. No, it's no, it's not. It's very that. grounded. And it's very almost dry about it at times, too. Like It's, it's almost like this it's just is the norm. This is honestly, and hear me out here, the mm. most Ishiro, Ishiro Honda Godzilla movie. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Since the last Ishiro Honda movie. Like, you've mm-hmm. got characters that are clearly torn up about what they've seen in World War II and what mm-hmm. they've done and what they've had to fight over. You have characters who are just a little too young to have fought in the war, but still have that mentality of, I wish we had fought in the war because all my friends had fought in the war. Yeah, yeah. You still have that. And I love this feeling of just how much the, the war has played into this universe and how yeah. it has scarred these people. And that's why you have scenes like with with um uh with uh Uichi. With him finding the mining boat, which is a real thing, by the way. I love that scene because it's like Koichi has found a bit of a purpose. It's not like his problems have gone away. This has just kind of smoothed them over a little bit. Yeah, he has yeah. a new purpose, and he's good at it. He's a good gunner because he was an air, an air, an, yeah, uh, he was yeah. a pilot. And then he, uh, another thing too, it's like all these characters have these things set up and they wind up using it in the movie. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like he was, he was a guy who disarmed bombs and you never disarm a bomb throughout the entire movie. There's a, literally a five minute montage in this movie with an acoustic guitar playing. Yeah. Yeah. That I was smiling at. I was Dude, loving you- this development of this, this, this crazy makeshift family that was completely and totally torn apart by the war. And, but yet because of that, this little family formed out of it. Yeah, yeah. And I love that so much that despite all this destruction, despite all of this craziness, something kind of pretty and beautiful came out of this. It brought all these people together to try to rebuild the best they can. And to you know, it's really the heartwarming. Can, yeah. It's really heartwarming. And I love I love the crew he meets on the boat. They're like some of my favorite characters in the movie. I think they're all really fun. And I also just think they're all like it never feels like they're like a gag character or anything. They all feel like genuine people, you know? Oh, what was that that the younger one there? The the youngest yeah. guy and no, how they tell them. Like, yeah, well, all of them, yeah. Well, I love yeah. the 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 weapons expert, or the, yeah, the yeah. not the weapons expert, the the what he designed weapons. I love how it's almost like you discover that he was kind of hiding his identity throughout mm-hmm. it, or playing down who he was until after Godzilla attacks, and suddenly yeah. everyone's like, "I didn't realize he was that much of a bigwig." Yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, no, <laughs> yeah. he was playing it down. I just could not believe how much I cared about these humans, because yeah. this isn't a Godzilla movie so much in the sense that. It's Godzilla, and it's a human movie. It's it's yeah. a drama first before it's a yeah. Godzilla movie. That's kind of like what I was saying before, where it was like this. This feels like just like one of the most personal Godzilla movies. Like it's yeah, Godzilla is like this overarching force throughout the whole movie, but it really is at its core about these people and specifically Koichi trying to trying to end his internal war, even though the war is over. He's still hasn't left the headspace oh my god oh my god lucas the scene where he has a mental breakdown yeah yeah. and it's like he can't tell if it's reality or not yeah yeah. and the way how he just loses it and how she just holds him yeah it's it's, and i'm like that it hurt it felt earned yeah it's like you get it a big problem that I have with a lot of Japanese cinema is or modern Japanese cinema i should say is that they kind of over explain things or they really overact a lot mm-hmm. of what it is, or they treat it like an anime, where it yeah, works yeah. in animation, but in live action doesn't really work very well. Not the case with this. This is It's just a case of a good director knowing what he wants to do, having a vision of what he wants to mm-hmm. do, and then telling that story brilliantly. I, you mentioned the Black Rain. Oh my god, I loved that <sighs> oh, shit. I that, loved that shit. Yeah, that like, that like, entire oh, scene. 
Well, like, that that entire I never on a scale from one to ten, how terrified were you of Godzilla in this movie? Like, I, like every oh. time Godzilla, yeah, it, it was Matt. Anytime Godzilla was on screen in this movie, it was. It wasn't like oh cool Godzilla it was like oh fuck Godzilla it's, oh fuck Godzilla's <laughs> oh, coming fuck. and and I I I think the only reason why that works is because we cared about our characters so much yeah yeah because they're yeah. afraid we we should be afraid and oh my god the scene where Godzilla is chasing them on the boat was so good it was it was like <laughs> it was like mega jaws like it yeah. <laughs> yeah. they literally say it. they're on little shrinky dink like. Boat, shrinky dink wood boats how are they gonna outspeed or even deal with this thing that took out an entire tanker and, <laughs> and i love it how it's like they they all come to the realization that no we're just here to kind of slow him down yeah for yeah. the takeo to show up that that yeah. ship to show up and when and then godzilla makes mincemeat of that ship that's, that's and the it. only reason i love the fact that the only reason that our main characters survive and they know it is because the takeo showed up that suddenly got godzilla's attention not them yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that that entire scene was great, but that's also the first scene we get a glimpse at his atomic breath in this movie. In that scene, it plays, we don't see it really in full how it works, but it also plays the, the first trailer theme for this movie that they released. And I thought that was the best place to put that fucking song. Oh, yeah. Because already it looked hopeless because he's destroying the ship, but you see for the first time how his atomic breath works in this movie. And it's like, holy yeah shit. and and just how crazy that atomic breath is and and yeah. it plays into the nuclear element too i also love the fact that these characters aren't idiots they come <laughs> up on with they, they they are playing on their feet oh we have these mines let's hook up a detonation thing to them have godzilla swallow it and blow it up yeah and and i love it how he decides oh it doesn't the the detonator is severed shoot it yeah and like I, I yeah. love that, and they set that up earlier too. Yeah, you know, this is one of the most interesting elements about this Godzilla that I think is really, really cool. I love how Godzilla gets hurt and gets hurt yeah. bad throughout this yeah. movie, but he just regenerates, like like his <laughs> jaw almost getting blown yeah. off from this yeah. mine, and all of a sudden it just regenerates, and it's done. It's so creepy looking and stuff like yeah. that without it going into body horror. Yeah. Like a part of me was like, just imagine if Hideki Anno handled that, like how weird that would be. <laughs> and I love how they, they also explain why doesn't Godzilla use his atomic breath all the time? Because it hurts him. I love that. You have no idea how much I loved that. And, and, and I was like, know, oh, of course it would. There's a detail about that, that I have to give credits to, because on the second time I saw this movie, I saw it with, with my dad. I saw it with my dad who, uh, you know, he got me into Godzilla growing up. So I, I, he brought me to like see Godzilla 2000 as a kid and all that. So I, I treated him to, to mine as well because he wanted to see it. But he brought up a good point where is one of the last times he uses his atomic breath. And it's like during the finale of the movie. I'm not going to go fully detailed because we're not there yet. You see it is starting as he's charging up like one of the last times. It's starting to break out of him. Yes. He can't hold it in yeah. anymore. <laughs> I, I, love, I love that bit. And first off, one yeah. of the coolest deaths of, God, death yes! of Godzilla yeah. ever. The, the human plot or the, the idea of how they're going to stop Godzilla. Awesome. I, I think is the coolest thing that they've done since Godzilla Raids again. And I know yeah. a lot of people poo-poo on Godzilla Raids again, but I love the idea that these characters are like, wait, why don't we bury him in ice? We don't yeah. really have all these crazy weapons. Bury him in ice. And this movie is like, well, it sort of takes a trope that everyone that we've made fun of, it, we, we've really been making fun of it ever since Godzilla King of the Monsters, where it's like, how is Godzilla standing up in the ocean? Right now, yeah. when when is you when how is he doing that? <laughs> Did his legs just grow really long? And I was like, no, they actually turned this into like a plot point of the movie. Yeah. It's like, no, he's somehow buoyant. Let's crush him. Yeah, let's use the ocean to crush him. And if that doesn't work, first off, I love the fact that the characters are smart enough to make a plan B. If yeah. that doesn't work, <laughs> inflate this balloon thing. Shoot him up off. as fast as you possibly yeah. can and make him have a bad case of the bends. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> it was I thought so that cool. was such a clever way. Uh, like, because I was like, oh, they're just going to do like Oxygen Destroyer again. And I'm like, no, this no, is cool. that's this what is I so thought clever. too. I, th I thought they were going to do with the Oxygen Destroyer. I was like, oh. I think that was, was like, no, this is so much cooler. This is so I think much they cooler. We set it up like that to make yeah. everyone think it was mm -hmm. going to be Oxygen Destroyer, but to, and to sidetrack, it was like, no, we're just going to use science. We're just going to well, actually I use think, science. I <laughs> think this movie does that in a few ways because the twists that happen at the end, because there's a few that happen yeah. throughout the ending, 
I did yeah. not see coming. Are we talking like the the end end? Yeah, well, well, the or like the, the end fight. the the end end twist I actually didn't like, but yeah, yeah, the I'll, I'll, we'll the, the big yeah. one with the plane. Yeah, I did not see coming. I so I was happy like, it happened. Yeah, because but. I so this is a thing where I misinterpreted it because I'm just not knowledgeable on like ships and that kind of stuff because when I mean should we just go into it should we just like should I just well, go into it let's or? talk about let's let's not get to the ending yeah yeah just yet. yet let's yet. I wanted to talk about this because Godzilla really is the antithesis to Koichi this is yeah. Koichi's movie and I love how much Godzilla sort of comes back as the reminder of mm -hmm. what the war was Koichi's failings yeah because a part of me wishes they explored the romance between Koichi and that girl a little bit more. But another part of me was like, I'm glad they didn't do the Hollywood route because it would have been very yeah. easy to do the Hollywood yeah. route. And I think it speaks volumes to the writing that I cared about them enough that I genuinely wanted to see them get together yeah. or, yeah. or form this, this sort of makeshift family and, and everything like that. And just blown away by that. And yeah. and I love the fact that Godzilla is a constant reminder of the past. Lucas, I gotta ask, how good was it to see Godzilla actually actively killing people again? Holy shit. <laughs> what did Dude. they say? 30,000 dead? You see it, too, which is why, like, I've always rambled about on all of our Godzilla streams about Godzilla's size and, like, how I'm not a fan of him just being gigantic for the sake of it now mind you i do understand why to an extent where it's because you know buildings get bigger that godzilla has to get bigger with the buildings i understand that but i love how big he is in this movie he's I love the perfect he's like, height in, yeah, in yeah. godzilla minus one he's the perfect height he's not too big he's not too small yeah and and i so love like, the fact that the filmmakers were like again this is this is why you got to put him in the hand if you put a movie in the hands of an actual filmmaker Look what happens. I love how the director was like, no, I don't want to beat any records. I don't want him to be freakishly tall. I just want to tell a story where he fits. We're used to Godzilla being like, like a city is as big as his foot. But now we're seeing him just actually <laughs> yeah. walking through a fucking city. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit. And he's walking through it. He's stepping on the concrete. The concrete's going up. You see people getting launched into the fucking air like this. Well, this that's just it. We, we were just talking about with Godzilla, uh, the new Godzilla X Kong, how, the weightlessness yeah. of CGI. Yeah. This movie... Oh, Godzilla, no. you, you, eel! How heavy Dude, this guy I, is. Dude, I also too. A biggest one of the biggest takeaways I had with Godzilla in this movie is that, like, you know, like I, I love Sumation. You love Sumation. A and good I majority know. of people love the Sumation. <laughs> yeah, you love it. Yeah. Like he still animated it in, in, to an extent, like a suit at times. Like especially in the the, the Tokyo attack scene, I felt that the most because I feel like it kind of had to homage that a little bit. But it still feels like that, and there's weight to it, and it feel he feels alive, and that's. I cannot praise that enough. And I, I do want to talk about during this attack sequence because this attack sequence brings up one of the very few complaints that I have with the movie, and it's not so much the attack itself. It's what's going on with the sound design during the this attack sequence. And what I'm about to say, people are going to go blasphemy. I thought the use of Akira Ifukube's music in this attack sequence took away from the horror of the scene. I had a feeling, I had a feeling that's what you were going to bring up, Yeah. Honestly, as much as the, I love the use of the King Kong versus Godzilla music at the end of Taxi, during, mm -hmm. when they're circling him and everything yeah, like that, yeah. like I love, I, I thought it fit there for Godzilla's attack sequence. One, I felt it a little distraction that they were playing the Mothra theme uh, during that entire thing. <laughs> to me, that felt like fan service. That was all that yeah. was was just fan service. And I'm sitting here like, you know, it worked in Shin Godzilla. And I can't really tell you how it works in Shin Godzilla, but it doesn't work here. Yeah. Other than I think it comes down to tone. The the guy who did the music was uh, uh, Naoki Sato, no relations to Masaru Sato, who did the music for okay. several Showa-era Godzilla movies. But the, the music for this, I think his tone, with the church bells and the choir... And and just dark because I wanted to talk about the music here because I think this would be a good time to sort of bring it up would have fit the dread better than if Akube's mm -hmm. marches, mm -hmm. or if you're going to use any music from a Godzilla movie, it would would be the original. Yeah. And to me, the 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 use of Godzilla's march and even the Mothra march 
for Mothra vs. Godzilla. It was too triumphant to fit the horror of what yeah, we're seeing. Yep. And and I'm like, compare that to the music by by Naoki Sato, which is very apocalyptic, very yeah. dark, very scary and visceral. That music would have worked better there. His mm-hmm. score would have worked better there. It would have fit the attack sequence more. Yeah. And to me, the fan service dragged the attack sequence down from being a 9.5 in terms of awesomeness to a, a 7.5 or 8. Because I was distracted by it. I understand where you're coming from completely. I See, now I'm going to sound like the opposite spectrum. I really liked it. Because, <laughs> of really course liked... you do. Because, because you're, 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 you're a fanboy simpleton who likes Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Lucas, I'm jesting. That- yeah, that's right. That's right. You know me. You know me. I like I like when big monsters fight. I don't want any nuance. I just want to see big monster fight. That's what everyone wants. Everyone who tells me about Godzilla is like, oh, you don't like Godzilla for the people. You actually only like it for the monsters. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. It's I do think if Akube's music works during the attack scene, the, the ending sequences with, oh, yeah, with the battleships, I, I thought I prefer it, that use more. I yeah, more than that I, I vastly oh. preferred that. And it was cool hearing the King Kong versus Godzilla music play yeah. again and, and yeah. stuff like that. Like, I, I dug the shit out of that. It's just the attack sequence needed to be dark. Stick with that. Because look at all these people that are just getting killed. So, Lucas, on a scale from Hi. 1 to 10, how shocked were you when the girl was killed? Uh, yeah, that scene is nuts. I think because it's also like it's coming off. And this is obviously a recurring thing throughout the movie where it's like, Koichi has one really happy moment in real of like, oh, maybe I can come through this. And I, especially that one is like, he's like, maybe I can try to live. And then that happens. The Ginza attack happens. And I got an wrong. audible, it got an audible gap, uh, gasp from me in the theater really? when she, when she really? got killed. I genuinely yeah. went, oh, yeah. I genuinely I did that, that because I, was... I wasn't, I, I did not think. And again, I should know better. I did not think the filmmakers would have the balls to do it. Yeah. It does a few different things for the movie. Thematically, it works because, as you said, Koichi has something good happen in his life, only for it to be horribly ripped away. But for the movie itself, her death suddenly makes you go, none of our characters are safe. Yep. Yep. None. Yep. They pulled a psycho. None of your characters are safe. Any one of these people could die at any time. And because of that, it made Godzilla's attack. 10 times just Godzilla in general 10 yeah. times more terrifying yeah it just ramped up the the the, the fright factor I know <laughs> I kind of like talked about it a little bit when we talked about the, the the boat scene where he did it for the first time but like on land for the first time where we visually see how his atomic breath works in this movie I Wonderful. think that scene is so cool I think it's I think it's my friend compared it to like a flintlock pistol Maybe maybe that's the wrong firearm, but <laughs> I can see it. I don't think it's very yeah. accurate. To me, it's it's a nuclear reactor. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, okay. That's exactly what that is, and I think they did that very much so on purpose to make it look like a nuclear reactor. It's, and I love I how that... painful it looks too. Yeah, yeah. The fact that it makes an atomic explosion. Yeah, yeah. Godzilla roaring at said atomic explosion in triumph. Yep. And then the Black Rain, yeah, which yeah. was very famous for after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, yeah. Yeah. and even even the the H bomb tests, yeah, the Black Rain that followed. This is this is something I literally only think you, you wouldn't see this in a Hollywood movie. You wouldn't see those little details in a Hollywood movie. This is something that only the Japanese could really do. And and again, I don't really believe in that statement because and to me, any film you put your your movie in the hands of the right filmmaker, and I think anything is possible. But again, it just shows that Jap- the the Japanese know and understand the nuances of Godzilla, mm-hmm. yeah, and what yeah. goes into Godzilla. Yeah, totally. And and just what makes him terrifying for them as a people for them as a nation. Mm-hmm. And that, that entire attack sequence is just that the fact that, that they, that they're over the, the authorities are overwhelmed afterwards from trying to find people. Meanwhile, it's only two years after they've been ravished by war. Yeah. Yeah. The deadliest war in human history. They're still missing people from, from that, that they're trying to find. And now Godzilla shows up. It literally is bringing them from zero to minus one. 
Yeah. You know, and, and it's suddenly the title makes perfect sense. The sheer rage Godzilla emanates in this movie is that it's not like and there's not like any kind of rhyme or reason. He's just a force of destruction in this movie. Well, he's pissed. And I, yeah, he's pissed. He's like, pissed. And, 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 and what's almost sort of terrifying about this is Japan had nothing to do with the atomic bombs. And again, this kind this is this is a a, a minor element a sort of unsaid element of the original Godzilla, Japan just happened to be in its way. They had nothing to do with the H-bomb tests, and yet Godzilla comes Yeah, because of it. It's just, it's just Japan getting fucked again and again it's... and again and again. It's so wonderful that yeah. this filmmaker knows the time period, and he nails it. He nails it. He nails the already natural fear that a lot of these people had during this time period of, of rebuilding after so much destruction and the fire bombings, which by the way, the fire bombings of Tokyo killed more people than either Nagasaki and Hiroshima combined. I mean, it was awful. I mean, you, you saw examples of during, during the fire bombings, which are a huge element in this movie yeah. or a huge underlying current throughout this entire movie. After all, we hear that Koichi's parents, I think died in the fire bombings. I think they, yep. they say, yeah. There was a story I read just to show you how bad it was. They they found these people burned to death in in a meat locker and the only way they could get them off of the ground was to pry them out with shovels. That's so because that's of so... how hot it got in there from the fires. And of course yeah. Tokyo back then looked nothing like Tokyo today. Even the, the Tokyo of 1954 in the 1954 Godzilla movie looks nothing like what Tokyo looks like today. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how rapidly Japan grew after World War II. And a lot of it was, admittedly, because of us, because of America. Mm -hmm. We wanted a strong yeah. ally. And again, this, I bring this up because this is, this is a part of the movie. Yeah, no, We, needed, we totally. needed a strong ally in that region at that time. We wanted somebody, this is why the emperor didn't get hanged, by the way. We needed somebody that could possibly counter the Soviets, the communists, because we had the Soviets, right? The Russians who were communists. We had the Chinese who were communists. And at around this time period, guess what was happening in Korea or what was about to happen in Korea? The Korean War. So we have another communist country in there. And that's, that's what I admire about this movie is that America doesn't really want to get involved, even though it is kind of laughable that we wouldn't get involved after 30,000 people were killed. But I like this element of America is really kind of afraid to get involved because we don't want to piss off the Soviets right now. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, politically that makes sense. Would we not have gotten involved after 30,000 people were killed by a giant fucking monster? Uh, I think we would have gotten involved, but I don't know. I don't know, but again, I like that. I like that the movie at least had the balls or, or the gumcha to kind of explain it why yeah, we aren't yeah. here. Yeah, um, it's like you said, it's believable. It's like I can understand it. it. Yes, yeah. I was expecting yeah, it to yeah. be like the original Godzilla, where like the original attack sequence in the original Godzilla yeah. is quite drawn out, but yeah. purposefully so. This movie, I was I was shocked that it was only like five minutes at most. I was like, wow. Yeah. I was genuinely shocked. We actually, I think, we see a lot of it in the trailers. That's probably like one of the scenes highlighted the most in the trailers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I don't know sure. if you knew about a lot of the criticisms with Shin Godzilla when it came out, particularly not so much in Japan, but over here in the West, mm -hmm. uh, that everyone was complaining that Shin Godzilla was very bluntly nationalistic and very jingoistic and calling for Japan to rearm itself and everything like that, which I don't agree with, by the way. Yeah, I, I think, I, it, I think, it, I think yeah. it does have a nationalist stance to it. Yeah. But I don't think in the way that a lot of Western audiences interpreted. Uh, uh -huh. I think they just were seeing too much into it. What I find interesting about Godzilla Minus One is that it still has this nationalist pride to it, but it mm -hmm. does so in the complete opposite direction, where it's not the weapons or the army that's going to help us. It's the average everyday civilian. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. instead of fighting for the purpose of perpetuating total war, we're now going to fight to save lives yeah that's what makes the the doctor's speech so good like the night before the the final showdown with godzilla is that that he he literally verbatim says it it's like like this country has prioritized is like the glory of the military and you know we make we make 
sh- we make sh- planes that just don't have ejection seats. We have poor like food food source right now. People are starving to death more so than not. And we want to change that with this. And I, I think that's such a great, powerful scene, too, especially coming from that character. Like he's very he's not only a very soft spoken guy. And then he says that well, it, he's not just a sp- soft spoken guy, Lucas. He's a guy that specifically would design weapons of war. And so I love this 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 fact that he is so determined to kind of write that wrong. Sorry to go back to this, but no, go, go. I love the scenes where it's like they're at Koichi's house and they're just drinking sake together. Yeah, yeah. I think that scene's great. Like, I want to hang out with them. I want to hang out with these. I like these characters. Again, this is why this movie could have been three and a half hours and Godzilla had the same screen time and would still like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyways, I do do love that entire scene. And I love the fact that not everyone agrees to go. I, I I like how there's a lot of people that are like I I just survived the war, <laughs> yeah. You know, in in a war where I literally had an 85 percent more that had an 85 percent mortality rating for for people like me. Yeah, yeah, I just survived. I don't want to throw my life away just for this. Yet I love how a lot of those people come back. Yeah, at the end of the movie, and stuff like that. Like, and, and again, the music is just so good during that scene too. Like when all the tugboats show up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they start tying the tethers to to the main battleships. They're all trying to yank Godzilla and bring him to the surface. Yeah. It, it gets to a point where it's like you talk about something you really enjoy so much that it's like I don't know how, how <laughs> many how times I can just say I it. loved it. I was like, it was great. It was like I, I genuinely thought the ending was going to be Koichi doing this the heroic sacrifice because yeah. to me that would complete yeah. his arc. It would. Yeah, yeah, it would. But I'm so happy they went with what they did because one, I didn't yeah. see it coming. I thought yeah. they were. I thought they were going to do a Kobayashi from Godzilla Raids again, where Kobayashi I'll, I'll explain my feelings on that after, after two, yeah. And yeah. I love how I, I love how we knew something was happening. We just didn't know what because they cut away before Tachibana can explain it. I genuinely yeah. loved it. I loved the intensity of that sequence. I loved. I loved the logic of the sequence too, where he's like, "No, I know how we can really hurt Godzilla. I do. I've seen it. You know, let's just put a bigger bomb in his mouth." <laughs> you know, and, and and I like I like yeah. that I like his lo- his twisted logic behind it too. I think yeah. works and fits yeah. with his character and fits in line with everything else that he has. As soon as that girl dies, what else has he got? You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. and and I genuinely thought he was going to die, was yeah. going to die, and I was very pleasantly surprised. And also, I think it fit his character arc better. I want to talk because I do want to talk about that because I was in that camp too. I thought it was going to be a suicide mission for him, that he was going to keep it to himself, and just that was going to be his redemption. Because, like you said, his arc was set up for it. Until, until, again, Tachibana shows up, and he talks about, he is showing him around the plane, and he shows him the the safety leather. Now, this is where my um, not knowledge of planes is going to come into play. Because my initial assumption was that he was lying to him in the moment that that wasn't the safety that was the ejection seat because he knew he was going to do go for it so i thought that at first honestly that, that i interpreted that, that would have worked so when that, that would have worked too yeah, yeah when he flies in and he pulls it and he didn't get ejected right then and there i was like oh shit wait wait oh fuck no wait stop 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 <laughs> we didn't see the scene it was like the, the the ejection would normally be like up here i think it was around mm-hmm. there yeah, mm-hmm. so like I, that was my knowledge of not really understanding those kind of planes during that period. I feel like Koichi throughout the movie, it's constantly told. No, it's not. Not that I think he is. He's constantly told to keep living. Like he's been through this monstrous war, but there's a reason to keep going forward. Like his parents told him that, Enrico told him that, and I think that still works for his arc completely. I think 100 percent still works for his arc that he has an ejection seat. I think it works better for his arc. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Again, it all comes down to I love the fact that we care about him. Yeah. Because we care about him and we care about these people on the ships. Mm-hmm. We're really invested at this point as to if they're going to live or not. Having the girl, quote unquote, die during the attack sequence, we, we, they all could die. Yeah. You know, it, yep. they're all cannon fodder at this point. Like, yeah. this could have easily been over the top, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I really love the choice the once like right before koichi flies in in the plane it is dead silent and just flashing between all the shots of the crew no one knows what's going to happen and it is it is de- it is dead silent there's no like hum it is quiet and i could tell because 
both times I saw the movie, everyone was quiet. I couldn't hear a single thing in my you theater. Hear, yeah, same with me. Yeah. Same with me. So when the you see the plane coming in and the, the motor is fading in, the music is fading in, it was like, I thought that scene was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Actually, yeah. you know, Alex Kogan, you have a good point. Koichi is a far better handled character than Haru in the in the Polygon trilogy. Uh, <laughs> he not only actually develops... He not only actually develops, he doesn't take the coward's way out either. Well, that's just it. I think, yeah, I think, well, him and Haruo in, in the, the anime trilogy are actually very similar characters, but you're right. I cared more yeah. about Koichi than I did Haruo. And yeah. I think it's for some of the very, some of the very same reasons th that you state. You're rooting for, Haru, uh, for, for, for Koichi throughout the entire thing. And it's because he's just a good character. Mm -hmm. they, they spend the right amount of time with him and the right amount of time with the people that are around him too, that you genuinely like him. Yeah, you know, yeah, and and that's and that's the genius of the whole thing. It's just too bad that I have so many mixed feelings about the actual ending of this movie. I'm in the same boat as you, so don't worry. Yeah, I I am in the same boat. So well, do you want to move into that? Yeah, let's let's move into the the true ending of this movie then. So it turns out that the girl didn't die. She was alive. She, she, was, she was alive found... and hardly hurt at all, apparently, despite mm -hmm. being flung back six hundred feet because of a shockwave of, a, of an atomic bomb. I didn't see it coming, I'll be honest. No, like, I did not see it coming. Yeah. I didn't see I didn't, it coming. Yeah. I do like the the embrace the two of them had in the hospital room. I, oh, I yeah. Do oh, like yeah, that. it's fitting. Are we going to talk about the thing now? We're going to talk about the thing now with that scene, too. What What uh -huh. other thing is there of the scene other than that she's, she's alive? Did I miss something? Oh, did you not notice the neck thing? So on her neck, there is a clear shot that like the side of her neck, like almost by the veins, are starting to blacken, and they almost form what looks like a Godzilla spine on her neck. What? How, did, how didn't I see that? Yeah, it's it, it is really quick, but it is focused on it. That that is an aspect that happens in that movie. I this is one point where I am I am fucking stumped. I I don't know what that is gonna mean. And well, I figured that that meant cancer. I thought that if it would mean anything, because a you mentioned it, you you. You just noticed that it was kind of like black shadow somehow. That's what I thought it was. But, but no, but no, no it, it forms a distinct shape of a spine, like of like a Godzilla's spine. I see. Like to me, I thought it was like because the movie does also the other thing at the ending that we have to comment about is that Godzilla is not dead. Godzilla is not dead. Yeah, he's regenerating. It was very GMK. Uh, the reason why I'm yeah, my friend it was made very the same GMK. Actually. Yeah, S same comparison. Now the reason why I bring that up though is that. Adam, were you expecting this movie to do something like that? Oh, yes. To set up... You were... Okay, so you were. Yeah, because I was like... I wasn't sure going into it. Like, I was expecting it to just be a standalone thing, and that's it. So when they did that, I was a little whiplashed by it. I was like, oh, we're going to set up for another movie in this one. But what did, what did you feel about that? Uh, well, I, 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 I don't really have a feeling about it, because okay. if they make a sequel to this, I kind of hope they don't. But if yeah, they do make a that's... sequel to it, it's fine. I care about the characters yeah. enough that I hope they use the same characters. I knew that he was going, Godzilla was going to live because he can't kill Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, I think that's one of Toho's stipulations, actually, uh, that you actually can't kill Godzilla. Oh, okay. And okay. All right. So I went in knowing that Godzilla was going to live in, in some way. I do yeah. like how grody it is. I like oh, how oh, yeah. it plays into yeah. it, it kind of plays into that body. Again, this made me go, oh, my God, if Hideaki Anno did this. Um <laughs> it, it kind of looked like the the mass at the end of the movie kind of looked like I don't know if you know anything about Resident Evil, but it looks like a lot of like what characters would mutate into in Resident Evil. <laughs> like like these fleshy, like bubbly yeah, creatures. Yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> well it's gross and but I like it. Yeah. You know, Lucas, to kind of go back onto something really quick. You sure. mentioned something kind of interesting. You you mentioned something that I think is very apt. You sure. said, I know this is very Hollywood when you were just talking yeah. about something a little bit earlier, but I, I think th this is actually a good time to kind of bring this up. As much as I love this movie, and, and, and me genuinely love this movie, I think one reason why it's being so universally hailed by everyone mm -hmm. is because it is a lot more mainstream in many ways than I agree with you. Shin Godzilla. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that one. It is good. Like, it's actually, like, real. that was the thing that was my praise about it, is that, like, I love Shin Godzilla. Awesome fucking mm -hmm. movie. Right. Way harder for mainstream audiences to digest that movie. Oh, yeah. Because we're following the Japanese government. <laughs> this movie, we're following people. Like, <laughs> it, it, We're following people. We're painstakingly following all of these people 
Meanwhile, yeah. we're not summarizing any of this stuff. We we are going to show that there are hundreds of people at play here and not just yeah. two or three. Uh, yeah. Again, I love that little gag on Shin Godzilla where the main character's subtitle gets longer and longer and longer and longer <laughs> as the movie goes yeah. along. I think that's pretty funny. But I, I I do agree. I think this movie is a lot more Hollywood than mm. than Shin Godzilla ever was or even ever had the the intent of being. I think it also like and I hope this isn't like a controversial feeling. I think it has some influence from the legendary movies too, specifically well, 2014. 2014, like like the shot when he powers up his atomic breath in the, the Tokyo attack. That is super inspired by fucking 2014. I mean, yeah, like, and, that, you, and you can't convince me, me otherwise. Like, I think I think the sense of scale is also heavily borrowed by, yeah. by G2014. Because say what you want about Godzilla 2014. I think that movie yeah. is the best at depicting the scale of mm-hmm, these mm-hmm. giant monsters attacking this city. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I genuinely think, and I said this earlier too, Lucas, I think they did listen to a lot of the criticisms that the MonsterVerse had. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they said, all right. Let's do it our way. And I'm okay with that. I, I, yeah, I don't too. care if they're borrowing from it. I, I really don't. It, it all comes down to the final execution. It also makes it me it makes me kind of happy, too, because it's just like, you know, you get all the people online who are, like, making the comparisons. And, yeah, while I can definitely say that the MonsterVerse stuff is far weaker than this movie, it, it makes me a little happy that it still takes, like, some influence from that, you know? Like, it, it still, I don't know how the best way to describe it other than that. That there is still some merit to, at the very least, 2014, you know. This movie, I, I think this is what puts this movie above just about everything Hollywood lately, is a filmmaker made the movie. There you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Like, like, literally. A guy said, this is the vision we're going to go with, and said, this is the vision that we're going to go with. Here's what we're going to try to do. Here's the theme. Here are the characters. Here's the direction we're going. And Toho said, okay. And he did an outstanding job. And FYI, I think they did that with Shin Godzilla as well. It's, it's, it is just crazy how different the two movies are. Yeah. Like, they, they essentially tell the same story. If you really look at it, a giant monster comes out of the water. Oh, shit, we got to stop it. What are we going to do? It's literally both movies when you get down to brass tacks, but so radically, radically different from each yeah. other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to thank everybody for showing up. But Lucas, before we leave... Uh, okay. If you could pimp yourself out for a little bit, because you make shit too. Oh, wow. I kind of do. But hi, everyone. My name is Lucas. Uh, as as you all know, I have a channel, Pow Pop. Uh, I do game streams there. I also have, you know, I got the, the Twitter or the X or whatever it's called now. Um, I have that where I post artwork. And I also have an Instagram now. That's just like, it's like Pow Pop. It's just P0WP0P. You can find me there where I'll post art every now and then too. And and I love that. I do want to address John's <laughs> comment. King Kong Escapes what? is my favorite Rankin Bass Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very true concerning the fact that Rankin Bass made the movie. Um, <laughs> or put up the money for the movie, I should say. <laughs> Wonderful. I tasted better the first time. I'm just going to let everybody know. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, I don't really need to, to, to pimp myself out because this is my channel, but all my social media is uh, indeed in the description below. Well, Lucas, thank you very much for joining me. It is always a thank pleasure you. to have you. Proof, oh, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing happened between Lucas and I. Uh. <laughs> uh he we were just doing different things at different times <laughs> did you know did you know that we're adults yeah i i didn't i didn't it, sometimes I, it's hard for me to accept that stay tuned for more godzilla content a bit later i don't know whatever fuck i don't care <laughs> i'll talk to you guys later